Our next speaker is Mayor of Chicago. And there are three quick things I would like to share with you. Number one, the City Club of Chicago is enormously grateful to him and his wife, Amy, for both visiting and speaking at Misericordia and Special Olympics Chicago and encouraging everyone in the City Club spirit to give back in the same measure they have received. Number two, the City Club of Chicago is very thankful to our next speaker for helping raise millions for children and adults with special needs. Number three, our next speaker's frequent attendance at City Club of Chicago events and encouraging his commissioners, some of whom I just mentioned, to speak is deeply appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Mayor. They're both working? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in the House floor of the House of Representatives. There was always a podium for Republicans and Democrats. This is for the Orthodox Jews and the conservative Jews. Uh, <laughs> I can say that you guys can't. Uh, there's a famous joke actually to that effect. Um, before I in, uh, introduce uh, Rebecca and Dorval, I want to make a comment about what we all as Americans saw this weekend in Charlottesville. Because at one level we saw the best of America, and at another we saw the worst. And I say that because my first journey on my own political action growing up in a home steeped in politics was when I was uh, 16 in 1978. Mm -hmm. And I went down to Marquette Park with my dad. I told my dad I was going, so he said he's coming, to protest against neo-Nazis who were spewing anti-Semitism, racism, and bigotry. It was my first independent act on my own, not with my parents, but on my own, to speak up, speak out, and exercise not just my rights, but most importantly, what I believe is the American ideals that we all hold together. And those who opposed the KKK and the neo-Nazis are the Americans that speak to American ideals. And Heather Heyer's parents should be proud that they raised somebody who knows what it means to be an American. And to everybody in Chicago who came out, not just in this city, but across the country, to oppose what they saw in Charlottesville, those who were spewing hatred and bigotry, they stood up and had their voices heard for what our ideals are and who we are. And I think the notion that when the bully pulpit of the American presidency is to be exercised, and you miss the distinction between our ideals and our values, and those who spew hatred, you have failed us in the job of a president to bring us country together. It does not require a multiple choice answer when it comes to what's right versus what's wrong. And what's more frightening is that those who are members of the neo-Nazis and the KKK think they have a friend in the Oval Office. There is no place in this city, in this country, for bigotry, for racism, for xenophobia, for homophobia, and for anti-Semitism. 
this is America, and our ideals and our values is what brings us together. And when a president exercises as a uniter, that is when they are the president of the United States of America. Sorry about that to Rebecca and Dorval. But that needs to be said. And everybody in this country needs to know that we are one country, one values, and there's no place for hatred and bigotry in this city, this state, or this country. Now, I do want to, uh, if I can now make a transition, to introduce Rebecca and Dorval, since I had something to do with this idea of them coming together. You should know that both of them have a role to play in building uh, our L stations and our CTA stations across the city of Chicago. Uh, and I say this is on a particular important day because there was a story today in the Wall Street Journal about how the city of Chicago and other cities are making major investments in bike lanes across the, uh, the city and that Chicago is one of the leaders. In fact, last year Chicago was rated as bike friendly, most bike friendly or number one city for bikes and bike friendly cities in the United States. And many of that goes, effort goes to CDOT and for their effort. And I want to thank Rebecca for her leadership in doing that. <clears throat> Look, just last Friday, I went to the executive committee down in, uh, for mayors down in New Orleans and led a panel discussion among mayors from all, city, all parts of the country, all types of cities, big, medium, and small about investing in infrastructure, investing in our transportation system. I have a simple premise. If you're gonna have a 21st century economy, you need a 21st century infrastructure system. It's that simple. Today, this morning, Rebecca and I opened up the Fullerton Damon uh, Elston intersection. There's been a 40 year bottleneck there and we finally figured out how to straighten it all out in one investment. But because of that, Midtown Tennis has hired now 180 more people. They're making an $80 million investment there. In a little while from now, in about a month, we're going to start the construction at Lathrop Homes and the modernization there. And if you don't invest in infrastructure, you will not get the private sector investment that you're looking for. You can see what happened once we opened up uh, the L station at Fulton Market. You would not be having Google, McDonald's, and all that economic development, and restaurants, and coffee shops, and residential development if it wasn't for the fact that all of a sudden you had a new public transportation station. Under the 10 years since 2011, there's 145 L stations in the city of Chicago. We have either rehabbed, totally rebuilt, or have the resources for totally rebuilding and rehabbing 46 stations out of that 145. It's the largest, most expansive investment in our L system and the public transportation system from the, tra uh, the stations themselves ever in the history of the CTA system. Rebecca and Dorval's leadership is essential for whether it's on roads, rails, in that effort of making sure that Chicago has a 21st century public transportation system and road system that allows us to move as a city. Now you should all know this, obviously we all watch what's happening in other cities like New York and DC, but our public transportation system, by investing an unprecedented amount of $8 billion in the capital improvement, has allowed the city, and I say this as somebody who uses the mass transit system twice a week to get to work, uh, and make sure that I, I, Dorville knows when I don't make it within my 30 minutes <laughs> of a lot of time and knows it very well. Uh, the truth is, I take it twice a week. I've been taking it that effort. We're the first city to have 4G completely on the system. We're soon gonna embark on the completion of the work on modernizing the entire red line from Evanston to 95th Street Station uh, and the stations between and the track work in that effort. We have now the new blue going on in that effort. So our efforts in modernizing that transportation, you should know just a couple facts. According to an economist at JLL, Chicago's economy in the last five years each year has grown faster than New York City, DC, and the United States of America each year. Now, I'm confident enough to say to you, it's not because of this charming personality. <laughs> no, uh, only my mother thinks that. For a whole host of other reasons of things that we are doing on talent and training, 
But one of the key reasons for that growth and economic expansion and economic livelihood is because Chicago is willing to invest in its infrastructure and specifically in its transportation system to modernize it. So if there's anywhere in the world you want to get to, anywhere in the United States you want to get to, and anywhere inside Chicago you want to get to, we have a 21st century transportation system. We have an unprecedented amount of investment, not just in our roads, but in our mass transit system. Dorval and Rebecca are leading that effort. I happen to think this is an important conference and discussion today because it's one of the more key parts of not just allowing people to get from home to work or be with their kids just a little longer, but it also is one of the reasons that Chicago's economy is growing at a pace slightly faster in both New York, D.C., and also the country as a whole in the last five years. And the transportation system and modernizing it for the 21st century is key to that effort. There are a lot of stations and a lot of part of the system, for everybody's knowledge, that was built when Roosevelt was president. Teddy Roosevelt. And if you got a use out of something a little north of 100 years, just think you're, you know, just thank yourself that it was there for 100 years. The challenge now for us, and the good news is, we have two people helping us lead the effort to invest in a system that will be around for another 100 years. Please give a warm welcome to both Rebecca and Dorga. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, on behalf of the Chicago Transit Board and Chairman Terry Peterson, I want to thank you very much for inviting us here today. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge a few of our transportation officials here with us today. Uh, Kirk Dillard, Chairman of the RTA Board. Uh, Leanne Redden, the Executive Director of RTA. I saw Leanne over there somewhere. Uh, Don Orsino and Norm Carlson from Metra. Uh, and Joe Zabel, my fellow DOT partner and now head of CMAP um, uh, with us today. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate, as I've stated many times before, all of your support for CTA and transit. Thank you also to City Club for having us. It's always an honor to be a presenter here. And it's especially a great pleasure today to get to be up here with Dorval. Uh, because we actually like each other a lot, and it's really exciting to get, have the opportunity to work together. And uh, today we're going to be talking about a lot of exciting work that's in the pipeline, uh, recently completed, and to come. So it's great to be here. And as we look out on so many colleagues, both within the city, other government agencies, and in the private sector, that are helping us to accomplish these projects. Uh, Jay uh, acknowledged a number of the, the elected officials and um, senior government officials that are here, and I'll echo that and just acknowledge all also the leaders of industry that are here. We could not accomplish all of this without the partnership with the private sector, and we're really all in this together. So it's great to have such a wonderful turnout today and see so many great faces in the crowd. Yes, I, I, I echo everything that Rebecca said, and, and I think that um, uh, I, I view it as, I know she does, as, as an absolute honor to be able to present jointly together. And, and I think we both recognize as we started working on uh, developing our presentation that this was the first time that CDOT and CTA had ever done anything like this. But if you think about it, it probably makes a whole lot of sense. And we probably should have done this a long time ago. And I guess we should thank the mayor for coming up with the idea of pairing us up uh, for this particular type of uh, uh, presentation. Um, the fact of the matter is that while many city agencies and departments work together on a wide variety of projects, CDOT and CTA have regularly partnered on projects that have had some of the biggest positive impacts on Chicago's landscape. Because no matter how you get around Chicago, every journey that anyone takes involves one of our agencies in some way. Whether that's headed to O'Hare or Midway, commuting to work or school, or just walking to the corner store for some milk. Whether you're on foot or traveling by bus, on a bike, by train, in a car, we're part of your trip. And our goal is to give Chicagoans good options for getting around the city safely and efficiently, uh, efficiently, excuse me, no matter which method of transportation you choose. 
CTA and CDOT are two sides of the same coin, intimately connected to Chicago neighborhoods and connecting those neighborhoods to one another. Our citizens are the lifeblood and we are the arteries that keep Chicago's heart pumping. Of course, there are a myriad of factors that influence a neighborhood, schools, community involvement, safety, among many others. But few things take or make as big of an impact as the public way and public transit. Think about some of the most vibrant neighborhoods throughout the city. There's a very good chance that transit investments or other public way improvements, or both, make a big contribution to the success of those spaces. What would Bronzeville be without the CDOT streetscape around 47th Street, or the CTA Green Line stations at 43rd, 47th, and 51st Streets? What would Division Street be without Paseo Bariqua with the iconic Puerto Rican flag over the roadway, or the number 70 Division bus? What would Argyle Street be without the innovative shared street there and the recently refurbished Red Line station? CTA and CDOT work together, like hand and glove, to carry out the vision laid out by Mayor Rahm Emanuel. And it's not just CTA and CDOT that are carrying out the mayor's vision, to be sure. There are many other city agencies and nonprofit and philanthropic and community stakeholder groups, many of you who are here with us today. But CJ and CDOT are really where the rubber hits the road. We're working together to get things built and keeping Chicago moving forward. When the mayor talks about building a new Chicago, oftentimes he's talking about the investment he's making through CTA and CDOT and what an investment it is. Since 2011, both CDOT and the CTA have completed, begun, or announced more than $10 billion in projects. CTA and CDOT are really at the heart of Mayor Emanuel's push to build a new Chicago for the 21st century. As the mayor has said, infrastructure isn't just about moving everyone around the city. It's about moving our city forward, connecting the people of our city to each other and to opportunity and giving everyone a chance to be part of building a new Chicago. The mayor's focus has been on modernizing and improving the reliability of our infrastructure. Of course, there have been many great new projects, from CTA stations to new pedestrian bridges, but the focus on reliability over expansion has meant that Chicago residents have seen many immediate benefits from this transportation investments. From projects that are massive and transformational, like the new Washington Wabash Station, the 95th Street Red Line Station, to the hyperlocal, such as our walk to transit projects, which are improving pedestrian safety around 20 train stations. We are working together to not only move people around the city more safely and efficiently, but also to create places that people want to be, where they want to linger, experience the vibrant cultures of the neighborhoods that make Chicago and places where entrepreneurs are inspired to chase their dreams and create new businesses and grow jobs for Chicago. Since 2011, we've opened four new rail stations and more than 70 track miles of rail have been repaired. 46 of our 145 rail stations, as the mayor mentioned, have or will receive major improvements, nearly one third of all CTA rail stations. By the end of the mayor's second term, Nearly our entire bus and rail fleet will be modernized with either new or rehab vehicles. At CDOT, we're proud to have partnered with CTA on many of these investments that are moving Chicago forward. Since 2011, under the mayor's leadership, the city as a whole, including the CTA, has created over 60,000 jobs, building or rebuilding Chicago's roads, bridges, streetscapes, transit system, airports, water and sewer mains, schools, parks, and playgrounds. And just as we are creating jobs and creating new infrastructure, we're also improving quality of life for everyone living in the city. CDOT services and projects are making a difference in the daily lives of people living in our neighborhoods across the city, whether it's repairing potholes or fixing streetlights, or completing transformative projects like the 606 or the River Walk. To name a few of those big investments that we're making in neighborhood infrastructure, we want to highlight a couple examples. On streetlights, CDOT is really excited to be launching the Chicago Smart Lighting Program in combination with the Chicago Infrastructure Trust, our colleague Leslie Darling, as well as Commissioner Danielle Demurer at the Department of Innovation and Technology. Together, we are launching an 
effort under the mayor's leadership to replace approximately 270,000 of our outdated high pressure sodium street lights across the city with new state of the art LED light fixtures. The LED lights will be more efficient and provide better quality light and more reliable light for residents of every corner of the city over the next four years. Moving to another favorite topic, of paving. We've made such improvements in the quality and condition of our roadways. Along with our partners, the city, Department of Water and Management, as well as private utilities, we've repaved about 1,700 miles of streets and alleyways since 2011. And by the end of the next two years, we'll have reached 2,000 miles of streets under Mayor Emanuel's leadership. That's about half the roads in the city. And while we're making all of these infrastructure improvements, we're also contributing to a core mission for CDOT and CTA, which is improving safety for everyone moving through our transportation system. We're pleased that the mayor announced in June that the city of Chicago is renewing its commitment to saving lives and preventing serious injuries from traffic crashes with the Vision Zero Chicago Action Plan. And both CDOT and CTA are core participants in that plan. And we thank everyone for their support and their contributions that can help make our streets safer for everyone, no matter what mode they're traveling on. So now we'd like to go over some of the highlights of what we've achieved in the last six years together. Talk about some exciting new projects that are close to completion, and also take a look at what's in store for future collaboration. We're really excited to announce that the new state-of-the-art station at Washington and Wabash will finally be opening in just a couple of weeks on August 31st. This has been a labor of love. The team has been working very hard to keep this project on track, working closely with businesses. Such a transformative project and one that is also very challenging to do in the close quarters of Wabash. The new station will create a gateway to Millennium Park and Michigan Avenue, delivering CTA riders to the doorstep of Historic Jewelers Row, as well as the Chicago Cultural Center. It's expected to become CTA's fifth busiest rail station, providing more than 13,000 rides on a daily, business, uh, daily basis on the brown, green, orange, pink, and purple lines. It will also connect with the Loop Link, which serves six bus lines that converge on downtown from all corners of the city. And we'll have more to say about Loop Link a little bit later. The new station is a great example of how we are re reinvesting in the core of our transportation system. It replaces two 120-year-old stations at Madison and Randolph along Wabash. You can't have a 20th century city running with 19th century infrastructure. So this is a great example of the importance of investing in the capacity and reliability of our system. The new station will add to Chicago's history of bold architecture with its striking modern design. The undulating waves of the canopy contrast to the city grid. And the steel and glass structure is designed to create a dynamic play of light reminiscent of the diamond facets that are on display in the historic jeweler's row below. We're really excited about bringing this project to a conclusion and hope you'll be able to see it for yourself and experience how it will enhance everyone's experience in the east side of the loop. CTA and CDOT also announced earlier this year, along with the mayor, that we will be building a new infill station on the Green Line at Damon. Infill stations are those that close the gap between existing stations. And in recent years, CDOT and CTA have completed other infill stations, including Morgan on the green and pink lines in 2012, and Sir Mac McCormick Place also on the green line in 2015. The newest station at Damon is a long time coming. It's expected to open in 2020 for service and will serve businesses in the Kinsey Industrial Corridor, visitors to the United Center, nearby residents, including Chicago Housing Authority properties that are part of the burgeoning redevelopment in that area of the West Loop. It will be filling a one and a half mile gap that exists between the existing stations on the Green Line at California and Ashland. And this helps address longstanding concerns about access to public amenities on the west side, which is part of the mayor's efforts to improve opportunities and connectivity for jobs and housing access. We've worked closely with Alder Burnett, who's been a champion on this issue, and we are really excited to be moving forward this project, which is critically important for access to transit, jobs, and housing in that area. 
At CTA, we continue to see how investments in new and improved CTA stations pay great dividends for communities across the city. By providing convenient, affordable transportation options, we make it easy for people to get to and from work, school, and their other destinations. And new and improved stations have been shown to promote private investment in the surrounding area. <coughs> we at CTA are very excited about the next step in the ambitious Garfield Gateway project, which the mayor unveiled last January. The project will completely renovate the main station house and improve accessibility at the third busiest station on the Green Line. Additionally, the project will renovate the original historic Garfield Station House, which is one of the oldest rapid transit station houses in the United States. The station house will be transformed into a welcome center, community space, and small business incubator in the heart of the Washington Park neighborhood. This dynamic is at the core of CTA's modern philosophy about connecting our customers to more than just buses and trains. When they use our system to travel to work, to school, to visit friends and family, or to visit any one of the many vibrant neighborhoods throughout our city, we want them to know that we view the end of their CTA trip as the beginning of something great. The $203 million Wilson Station reconstruction project is well underway and is on time and on budget for the completion by the end of this year. The Wilson project is one of the largest CTAL station projects in our history and will rehabilitate a facility that many viewed as an eyesore and create a beautiful, fully accessible station that our customers will enjoy for many, many years to come. Elsewhere, the new Gateway project at Belmont Blue on the Blue Line really emphasizes the importance the mayor, CTA, and CDOT place on ensuring that our projects not only improve CTA, but also highlight and celebrate the surrounding community. CTA stations are anchors for many communities serving not only distinct visual landmarks, but also serving as the epicenter for business and activity. This particular project in the Avondale neighborhood will enhance the street level entrance to the Belmont subway station and will also improve the bus arrival and departure areas. This will speed bus boarding at one of our busiest bus rail transfer points in the entire CTA system and provide a safer, more comfortable environment for pedestrians. We anticipate beginning construction of this project early next year with completion estimated to be completed in the second half of 2018. Another great investment for bus riders has been the Loop Link. CDOT completed major elements of this project in late 2015. It was designed to get the most efficient use out of an existing street while improving bus service on some of downtown Chicago's busiest streets, including Washington and Madison. It was one of the biggest wholesale changes in street designs downtown since the days of the streetcars. Through innovative design, we are prioritizing transit and maximizing capacity on these corridors where almost half the people in vehicles are traveling in buses. In the Central Business District as a whole, about 60% of commuters rely on mass transit. So that's why it's crucial that we invest in and modernize the city's transit system to ensure we are building capacity in our system, to ensure that we can continue to grow access to the job market downtown and beyond in the neighborhoods. We aren't adding new roads in the Central Business District, so we have to think in innovative ways about how to better design our public ways to maximize that long-term growth, and the Loop Link is a great example of how we can do that. The Loop Link includes benefits for pedestrians, bike riders, and motorists, for example, including shortened crosswalks for pedestrians, protected bike lanes, and more dedicated turn arrows for general traffic. Better separation of buses, general vehicular traffic, and bikes and pedestrians in this dense part of the loop improve safety for all by reducing conflicts. And there's no doubt that thanks to CTA's, CDOT, CTA's, CDOT's efforts, CTA helped. Together. Together. Tens of thousands of CTA bus customers on the six routes that use the corridor each day are now benefiting from faster, more reliable bus service because of the red bus only lanes and early traffic signals for buses at key intersections. And we think bus service will continue to improve after all the work is done at the Washington Wabash project later this month. And at the west end of the Loop Link Corridor, we completed the Union Station Transit Center last August. 
this off-street bus boarding facility just south of Union Station has improved CTA customer safety and convenience around the station, which serves 120,000 people each day. The Transit Center also improved traffic flow around Union Station by better organizing bus, private vehicle, and taxi traffic, reducing some of the congestion that you had curbside around the station. It also provides a very important underground pedway connection between the Transit Center and Union Station to ease connections between CTA buses and Amtrak and Metro service. <coughs> the Transit Center is just one of the first steps in a program of major improvements that have already begun as part of the Union Station Master Plan redevelopment that we're working on as a city in coordination with Amtrak, Metra, CTA, and other partners to harness the untapped potential of the historic station and the surrounding West Loop. We're working with our partners to bring Union Station into the 21st century to make it a vibrant destination and fulfill its promise to be a true West Loop intermodal transportation center. Amtrak recently announced the selection of a master developer for the commercial elements of the plan and the neighboring Amtrak-owned properties and air rights. So including the Loop Link, Washington Wabash Station, and the Union Station Transit Center, this represents an investment of over $150 million in improvements in transit directly in the Central Business District that are critical to everyone's daily commute to get to home and to work faster, safer, and more efficiently. But we're also making improvements elsewhere in the city. And if you've been on the far south side recently, you've probably noticed that there's another major project now underway on the southern end of the red line, a new 95th Street bus and rail terminal. This $280 million project will not only provide a modern, convenient, efficient transit station, it will create a new landmark on Chicago's south side. Visually and architecturally, this station will make a bold statement about the strong future of the Red Line and the surrounding Roseland community. The new station will replace a nearly 50-year-old bus and rail facility that serves more than 20,000 people a day with a new state-of-the-art structure that more resembles an airport terminal than it does a transit station. But this great building is about much more than just aesthetics. With two buildings, one on both sides of 95th Street, and a completely reconfigured bus pickup and drop off area, the station will operate much more efficiently and provide a much safer and easier to navigate environment for both my train and bus riders. And will also include some amazing, I mean really amazing, first of its kind artwork by the Chicago based and internationally renowned artist, The Astor Gates. And I can't wait for you all to see that. And as important as it is to continue to modernize and improve our transportation network, it's also critical that we make sure that each and every rider be able to access it. Both CTA and CDOT have been very focused on accessibility throughout the city. Earlier, I mentioned CDOT's Walk to Transit program, where we're improving pedestrian safety and pedestrian accessibility surrounding train stations. One of the critical elements of that is making sure that we have <coughs> ADA accessible curb ramps in place at all of our uh, sidewalk corners. Since 2011, CDOT has constructed more than 55,000 new ADA curb ramps on corners around the city, making it easier and safer for everyone to get around. And just as CDOT has been making the, the sidewalks and ex access to our stations more easier, CTA has also been focused on making sure that we can make our stations accessible as well. Last year, we announced that we are creating the CTA's All Station Accessibility Program, ASAP. This comprehensive plan will develop station concepts and cost estimates to achieve 100% wheelchair accessibility across our entire rail system in the next 20 years. We have worked closely with the Mayor's Office on People with Disabilities and Accessibility Rights Organizations like Access Living, as well as CTA's ADA Advisory Committee on this important issue. We have made a lot of progress since the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed in 1990. Back then, only 9% of our rail stations were accessible to customers with disabilities, and none of our buses were wheelchair accessible. Today, all CTA trains and buses are accessible to people who use wheelchairs and other mobility devices, and nearly 70% of our 145 rail stations are accessible, 
with more station improvements either underway or starting soon. That includes ongoing projects to add elevators and improve accessibility at the historic Quincy L station on the west side and on the, west, and on the far west side of the loop and the Illinois Medical District station on the blue line. And as we continue to improve stations, facilities, and the public way, the mayor has also asked us to think not just about the nuts and bolts of the infrastructure, but also about the aesthetic appeal to the millions of people using it every day. This year, we've been celebrating the Year of Public Art in Chicago. Led by the city's Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, both CTA and CDOT have been involved heavily in this effort. We just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Chicago Picasso sculpture. So we all know, with that example, how important and transformative public art can be in Chicago. <coughs> public art and eye-catching architecture have become hallmarks of recent CTA and CDOT projects. I hope you've all seen the new pedestrian bridge that we completed last year over Lakeshore Drive at 35th Street. It creates an iconic new gateway to the south side and also provides critical connectivity for people living in Bronzeville to give them better access to the improvements on the lakefront. Further south, this spring we broke ground on an additional pedestrian bridge at 41st Street that features a design that will be equally as stunning as that at 35th. For all the projects that we carry out for the CTA, we aim to live up to the city's reputation for significant architecture and to feature art by local artists. For example, in the Washington Wabash Station, we will also be including work by local artists, just like we did on the bus platforms that were part of the Loop Link Project and the Union Station Transit Center boarding areas. Art and quality architecture are also a key focus at CTA, and our investment in the communities we serve extends far into our public art program. Mayor Emanuel's investment in public art citywide has resulted in a near doubling of CTA's collection of public art since 2011 to more than 60 works of art across all of our rail lines. Over the next few years, CTA's public art collection will further expand to include nearly a dozen new works of art. The work includes mosaics, art glass, and sculptures created by nationally and internationally acclaimed artists, including Cecil Balmain, a world-renowned artist. In fact, we've hired dozens of artists to create the art, many of whom have been living and working in Chicago for many years. We believe that art is an important part of civic life. It enhances the community experience and adds to the overall vibrancy of all of our communities. Another way that we're enhancing CTA service and offering good transportation options is our bike share system, Divi, which we refer to as Chicago's newest transit service. Divi has been a tremendous success in Chicago, underscoring our emergence, as the mayor mentioned earlier, as the number one city for bicycling in the US. In a little over four years, Divi has recorded more than 12 million rides, and we view it as a great complement to the CTA. In locating Divi stations, we place them close to CTA stations and bus stops, where they can provide that crucial last mile or first mile access to jobs, schools, and other destinations. One quarter of Divi stations are within an eighth of a mile of a CTA or metro station. And we're working on an integration between the Ventra and the Divi systems to make the, the mobile systems, to create uh, connections that are easier than ever. All this coordination makes transit even more convenient and efficient, again, helping with our goal to ensure that we're providing people with good transportation options to access all parts of the city. And we believe that communities understand the importance of these investments in transit and transportation. In recent years, you may have heard the new term emerge related to transit investment, transit-oriented development, or TOD. TOD typically includes a mixture of housing, office, retail, and other amenities located within a half mile of quality public transportation. Because of our robust transit options in Chicago, more and more residents do not want to own a car and are not demanding parking. The city's zoning code has been modernized to allow lower parking requirements and in some cases zero parking if they're located near transit. These developments can then build more meaningful and useful spaces for the residents instead of half-empty parking structures that are increasingly not needed anymore. 
and we've already seen local examples of TOD's effectiveness right here in Chicago. The Cermak McCormick Place Green Line Station is a vital transit connection for Chicago's historic motor road district in the near south side community. The station's opening in 2015 has brought not only an increased bus and rail ridership, but also spurred local economic development with several commercial and residential projects underway. And following up on that infill station's completion, we are <coughs> finishing up this fall a streetscape on 23rd Street, connecting the new station to McCormick Place. And we're also will be starting plant uh, construction soon on a streetscape along Michigan from Cermak to 24th Place. Again, building on the success of that infill station and supporting economic development. Also, since the opening of the Morgan Green Line Station in the West Loop in 2012, we've seen major transformation of that area. Large businesses like Google and McDonald's, as well as smaller ones, including the restaurants and shops nearby, are opening or planning to expand, and new residential growth has exploded. Between 2012 and 2016, the average annual number of business licenses issued within a half mile of the new Morgan Station jumped 18% compared to the year before the station opened. And more impressively, between 2012 and 2016, the average annual number, number of construction and demolition permits jumped 96%. So we're seeing the catalytic effect that transit investments can have on, a, on an area. And near that new station, we are supporting this turnover that we see in terms of new land uses and supporting that growth with a major streetscape project for Fulton Market to modernize that now booming corridor that's just a block north of the station. And we're finishing up the first phase of that work and we'll be starting on the second phase next year. Of course, TOD is more than just dollars and cents. Its biggest impact is making communities more vibrant, providing more opportunities and access and positively impacting lives. However, as proud as we are of what our agencies have accomplished during the mayor's tenure since 2011, we're equally excited about the future, including joint projects that we will work on together and individual initiatives CJ and CDOT will pursue separately. With the new Washington Wabash Station wrapping up and launching the Damon Green Line Station, we'll start to turn our attention to the next major loop station investment, which will be to the State Lake Elevated Station, which is also a long time coming and is a major capacity investment that will benefit the entire CTA system. Further out in the future, CDOT and IDOT and CTA are collaborating with the Park District and other stakeholders on the planning study for the future redesign and reconstruction of North Lakeshore Drive from Grand to Hollywood, another major formative project for the city. We're excited also to continue investment in smart technology. We're working to use technology to improve the speed and reliability of bus service. Through innovative projects like the Jeffrey Jump on the south side, as well as on major arteries like Ashland and Western Avenues. Last year, on nine miles of South Ashland Avenue, CTA and CDOT began operating transit signal priority, where late buses get a longer green so that they can get back on schedule. This year, we're rolling out the technology on Western Avenue, all the way from Howard down to 79th Street. And I envision a day when the whole city will benefit from transit signal priority. And you may not be aware of this, but more than 800,000 people ride CTA buses each day. That is why it is important that we continue to support CTA bus service to make it more attractive for riders. We've taken several steps thus far to improve service and reliability. In 2015, we reintroduced express bus service on Western and Ashland Avenues. To date, they are performing better than most routes in our system. Additionally, in 2016, we implemented a number of improvements to seven south side bus routes, including longer service hours and more efficient routing. And we're continuing to build on that success. Since 2016, we've tested prepaid bus boarding at select locations to allow customers to prepay their fares and board buses more quickly with the goal of providing faster, more reliable, and efficient service to our customers. This effort has gone very well, and we're continuing those pilots 
which are currently in place at the 69th Street Red Line Station and at Lakeshore Drive at Belmont. Next year, CJ will move forward with one of its most ambitious projects ever, the Red Purple Modernization, or RPM for short. This is a multi-phase program to completely rebuild 10 miles of the red and purple lines north of Belmont. Phase one of this transformative project will include rebuilding four stations and creating a bypass to replace a rail junction that is regularly clogged with congestion between the red, purple, and brown line trains near Belmont Station. The first phase of work will allow us to serve an additional 7,200 passengers per hour and meet demand in a region expected to grow substantially in population. There are few public investments that have a bigger impact on creating jobs than infrastructure. Big construction projects require skilled, hardworking men and women, as well as a wide variety of suppliers and professional services like engineering and architecture. Since 2011, CTA and CDOT projects have created more than 22,000 direct jobs. That represents about a third of the overall city jobs created during that time period. Along with creating opportunities for individuals, CTA also seeks to help businesses get involved with working on our projects. That is why we are committed to supporting DBEs in any way we can, from seminars about becoming a certified DBE, to guiding them on how to work with our, within CTA, to connecting them with our prime contractors. Four years ago, we launched the Red Line South Reconstruction Project, an ambitious effort with the goal to completely shut down and rebuild the Southern Red Line from Chinatown to 95th Street, while also improving the stations and rerouting our entire riding public for five months. In the end, we achieved our goal, but there was another result that brought clarity to our efforts to help serve the local business community. The project also resulted in $84 million in contracts to DBE companies and firms, and we exceeded our combined DBE goals for the project. Since then, we have continued to push hard to reach our DBE goals and surpass them, and to inform the community when these opportunities exist. This is true for a number of projects that we are working on. For, exist, for, exist, <clears throat> for instance, the three construction projects awarded for the 95th Street Project, more than $57 million worth of work has gone to DBE firms, many of them employing workers right here in our city. And the Wilson Station project I mentioned earlier, $41 million of contract work has been awarded to DBEs on that project alone. On the CDOT side, we are stepping up our approach to minority participation programs, including both construction and professional services. We're looking beyond the traditional MBE, WBE, DBE goals <coughs> to find ways to really drive the intent of these programs to level the playing field and increase the overall pipeline. We're working to create an environment in which the participation opportunities are expected to be in project leadership and equity positions within the teams doing work for us. This will be a change for the better in the way that our industry functions, and we are seeing industry respond already. We are very pleased that this year, CDOT awarded potentially the biggest professional services contract in our history, a 60 million five-year contract for engineering services for our locally funded neighborhood improvements. And the selected team has a nearly 60% participation by MBE and WBE firms with an MBE firm in the prime JV role. And the whole team emphasizes diversity in leadership positions, in equity positions, and provide significant mentor-protege commitments as well. Of course, none of this important modernization and development of our programs can be done without funding. <coughs> While funding has always been a challenge, it is particularly challenging in this current fiscal and political climate. We are very concerned about a changing landscape that is creating uncertainty about the very partnerships that have made Chicago the transportation success story throughout our history. The fiscal situation is threatening our momentum. As most of you know, the state of Illinois has not passed a new capital bill or revenue program, as many of us would like to call it, since 2009, which makes planning for our projects difficult because of the need to secure local match to leverage federal dollars for large-scale projects in particular. 
And this is happening at the same time that there is increased competition for federal dollars as more cities invest in transit, which of course is a good thing. But it ne means that we need to grow the pie at the federal level, at the state level, at the local level. We need more resources for transportation and transit in particular overall to keep up with the growing demands of our economy. We cannot be fighting for scraps in a zero-sum game between different modes of transportation within our transportation system. The time is now to stand up and recognize the investment that is needed to keep the state of Illinois, the city of Chicago, and the national economy moving and growing. At the federal level, there's been a lot of talk about the need for infrastructure funding, but there have not been any real helpful actions so far. And instead, the President's proposed budget threatens to eliminate funding for new transit projects with putting the New Starts program on the chopping block. We know this is gonna cut jobs, make commutes longer, and decrease overall levels of service. Likewise, the proposed cutting of the TIGER program takes away an opportunity to build creative, multimodal projects of regional significance. And it's because of these challenges that we have started to become much more creative in finding other sources of funding. The best example of that is the transit TIF for phase one of the Red Purple Modernization Project. The CTA in the city secured more than $1 billion in federal <coughs> funds more than half the project's cost by creating a transit TIF. State legislation approved with bipartisan support in the summer of 2016 made it possible for Chicago to pursue the transit TIF, which the City Council approved unanimously in November. And I want to thank the City Council members for their support. Other local TIFs have supported many recent investments, including the new stations at Sir Mac McCormick Place, Morgan, and Damon and Lake. So if we're going to keep up the momentum and fulfill the promise that we've laid out here today in terms of continuing this momentum with more and new and greater projects that are so desperately needed, we can't do this alone. It takes partnership, those in the room as well as at all levels of government. As the mayor has said, any federal or state plan for investing in infrastructure that does not also include dedicated funding for transportation is fairy dust. So as you can see, the CDOT CHA partnership has made a tremendous impact on the city's landscape and helped move our transportation systems into the 21st century. Despite challenges ahead, both of our agencies will continue to pursue projects and programs that better serve our riders, users, and communities. We are committed to staying on track. As CDOT continues to maintain, improve, and invest in Chicago's surface transportation networks in public way, Perhaps the single largest user of those assets, the CTA, continues to work closely with their team to make sure we are serving our customers with world-class transportation assets. So we thank you for your time and attention today. We'll look forward to continue to working together and with all of you to help make this city the great city that it is. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have time for a uh, question or two. Uh, uh, here's one. Is there a plan to extend the CTA 63rd Street line to Stony Island to accommodate the Obama Library Center? Who wants to deal with that? <laughs> um, I guess I'll start off since it's my line. Um, uh, I regret to tell you there are no plans at this time to extend the 63rd Street line to uh, Stony Island. Many of you may recall that there was a time when we had the line that went out to Stony Island and unfortunately uh, decisions made back then resulted in that line being torn down. Uh, I think it's safe to say that the funding challenges that Rebecca and I were speaking to earlier, particularly at the federal level, really make it a difficult task to pursue at this point in time, and, and certainly uh, with regards to the funding and priorities that I have in place at this point, that's not in the, the foreseeable future. And I'll add to that, as part of our planning for changes in the roadway network in and around Jackson Park, that's part of our coordination with the uh, development of the Obama Presidential Center and the other investments that the Park District is planning to make in Jackson Park. 
Um, obviously, transit is an important part of that planning. So we're in the early planning stages of changes in the roadway network. We've been out in the community. We'll be out on August 23rd and 24th with the next round of community discussions about planned changes in that roadway network. And I think it's great that everyone's recognizing the value of transit and, and asking for more. So coordination with CTA and Metra uh, is going to be an important part of the overall service opportunities to that area. Okay, we have time for just a couple more questions. Uh, this is from John Trotta with WSP USA. Both of you, can you share your vision on workforce development and second chance programs? How can we support firms that have graduated DBE status? first okay I um, um, I think as, as we stated in our remarks a, a big part of the work that we do is about creating jobs and opportunities and in, in, in our world uh, I think it's safe to say that transportation is one of the greatest ways in which you create opportunities not only in terms of the service that we provide but in terms of the work that we do and from CTA's perspective the second chance program uh, and the opportunity for workforce development creates the opportunities that we basically principally stand for. And the contracting work that we do, when the DBE opportunities that we create and will continue to create, are basically a big part of that philosophy. There's no doubt in my mind that as we move forward, we're going to be looking not only to, to prepare DBE firms to do work with CTA, but also to ensure that we maximize the opportunities for them to get that work so that they can continue to grow and be successful and move forward in partnerships. We certainly put a lot of emphasis on that with our primes, organizations like WSP, to make sure that they're engaged not only at the beginning of a project, but throughout the entire project and in advance of that project and after that project in supporting the DBE communities and creating the opportunities that we think are important for the city as a whole to continue to grow. And I'll highlight one example of how we're really trying to think about the overall pipeline of workforce development, including opportunities for ex-offenders, returning citizens. The streetlight uh, project that I mentioned that we're doing in cooperation with the Infrastructure Trust, uh, the assessment of existing infrastructure condition of our streetlight pro uh, system, part of the workforce that's being hired for that is coming from ex-offender apprenticeship programs. Likewise, some of that workforce is coming from graduates of our CPS vocational programs that are targeted towards construction. So we're really looking for opportunities to connect these different programs to create that pipeline of opportunity. Okay, we just have two questions left and then we'll get to our famous drawing. This is from Kevin Furr with the Lockmuller Group. Uh, can you explain the CTA's plan and vision timeline for modernizing the Forest Park leg of the CTA Blue Line? So as I indicated, or as the mayor may have indicated, we have a very old system. Um, uh, we've been fortunate enough to slowly work through the rehabilitation process for major pieces of that. Uh, the one piece that I still need to identify funding for is the Forest Park branch of the Blue Line. Uh, there's no question that that line is, is next in line for a major rehab. Um, we need to identify the funding to do that. Uh, the conversations and the points that Rebecca and I were both making about the challenges at the federal and state level continue to be an issue for how we're going to move forward. Um, but we are fortunate enough in the TIF legislation that was put into place to have the ability to TIF that particular portion of the blue line as well uh, as a way to possibly rehab that line uh, going forward. But those are still projects that we're working on in the future that are still under development. And I would say just stay tuned for future conversations about that as we get more federal and state funding in place to make it happen. Rebecca, you have a comment on and that? And it's a great example of how we're stronger together. Thinking about the redevelopment, the redesign of the Eisenhower, the CTA's Blue Line service is integral to that. You can only widen that roadway so much. To really build long-term enhanced capacity, we have to be reinvesting in that CTA line. Again, to give people good, reliable, efficient, affordable options for their commute to work and to school and to other destinations. Okay, so those are global uh, questions that you've addressed, so I'd like to bring one down to a more local level. 
Last Thursday night, I decided to take my grandson to the Chicago Bear exhibition game. <laughs> I boarded the number 146 bus at 5 o'clock at Chicago and Michigan. Guess what time we got to Soldier Field? Five minutes to seven. What can you do to make that <laughs> trip more efficient, speedier, and safer? Well, it's, it's <clears throat> not to personalize this in any way. Well, point, uh. point of disclosure, <laughs> Corval, point of disclosure. I was bus number, bus driver 13851 for three years <laughs> when I was in graduate school. Um, Actually, one of the things that we are working on with the Chicago Park District is a way in which to prioritize bus service into special events like at Soldiers Field. Um, we've had conversations about creating closer pickup and drop off locations, providing dedicated right of way for us because I agree with you. If I want people to ride CTA, I have to show that it's a much more convenient option than taking your car or Uber or Lyft or walking. And the only way I'm going to do that is by basically finding ways to prioritize my service and to make it easier and more convenient for you to both take it there and take it back. And so I'm, I'm optimistic, and, and I know we've had conversations with the Park District about, about this. We've had conversations with the city, uh, with OEMC, and others about ways in which we can enhance and improve the service that we provide so that that type of an of a, uh, experience will be very short-lived. Rebecca, do you have any comment on that? We want to make sure that CTA bus service and train service is really the first choice for people, especially coming in and out of major events like that. We don't want it to be the last choice. We want it to be the first choice. So that's why it's so important that we're working together to make sure that our roads and rails are moving people as quickly as possible. And certainly, we don't want you to have that experience again. And, and some cynical people would say, you two will solve this problem before we go back to the Super Bowl. But I won't say that. <laughs> uh, we have our famous drawing. I will so. solve this problem before we go back to the World <laughs> Series. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs>